All right, clubs. Um, so the big thing, the big thing with clubs is there's, you know, there's gonna be a dance floor. Um, I know this picture on the right probably looks more like a concert than a club, but if you've been to clubs in Vegas and in bigger cities, man, they look a lot like that. They're basically big places that are full of loud music and it's a giant uh, dance floor. So if you can dance, that's a, a great advantage. Use it. Um, I mean, if you can't dance, I recommend taking dance lessons. If you, at least just, you know, if you want to go to clubs and stuff, but even if not, it doesn't really matter. It's a useful skill. Um, but if you can dance, get on that dance floor and, and cut a rug because that's a super easy way uh, to attract women and to, I mean, the thing is in clubs, there's not a lot of talking you can do. Um, you know, it's loud, uh, you can't talk, so you have to use your body language uh, and your eyes and dancing being, you know, kind of the, the main sort of body language thing you'd be doing at a club. Um, if you are gonna talk, limit yourself to five words and that's like per sentence, not the entire night or anything. Uh, so I never usually say sentences longer than five words if I can help it because if you do, they're gonna miss some of it and they're gonna ask you to repeat yourself and then you gotta play that dumb game where she says what and then you gotta repeat it and by the third time repeating it, it's lost its, you know, punch and it's, it's just stupid. So limit yourself to five words. And sometimes this can mean shortening sentences if she can't hear you. So if you say like, wow, you guys look like you're having a lot of fun tonight. And she's like, which is not a good thing to say, but let's say you did and she says, what? I would just say, you're cute, right? Bring it down to two words. Um, and, uh, but I mean, to be honest, you don't need to talk a lot in a club. You can just dance, you can move. You guys are cool, I like you, um, you know, move them. Try to find the place, actually I think this is the next point. Uh, okay, no, it's not, but get into state. So this is the club, you gotta be in state. The music is playing, it's pumping in there. Um, you have to have a smile on your face. You have to feel the music. If you're standing around motionless and everyone else is dancing and getting into the vibe and you look like you just hate being there, you just get off work, you're not gonna fit in and no one's gonna wanna engage you. So you need to get into state. Um, smile. Feel the beat, get into the music. It's the only way you're gonna be able to exist in that environment and do well. Find the quieter areas and use them. One of the first things I do whenever I go to a club is I just take a walk around and get the layout of the place and find out where the quiet zones are so I can use them. I may wanna hover around them uh, if I can, I don't really like the dance floor too much so I'll usually stick to the quieter areas. Um, sometimes it's the smoking section, sometimes it's just, if they have like a pool area, if it's like especially Vegas, um, sometimes it's you know a porch or a patio area. Uh, those can be the, the best places. So take advantage of those and use them. Uh, escalation can be quick. In a club, you don't need to play the long game when it comes to escalation. Uh, you know, if you're gonna be making out with a woman within 10 seconds, it's probably gonna be at a club. So it's, uh, you know, you don't, not to say that that should be your goal and that you should try doing that, but if you feel it and you know you meet a girl and she's all over you right away, well, that's how it works sometimes in clubs. So don't be afraid to experience that, but um, you know, and you can keep dancing with her. You know, dancing can be a little bit of a, um, like you can escalate a lot on the dance floor, but then you go and talk to them and it's, it's not as on as it was in the dance floor because the dance floor is almost like a mask. They can sort of not have to be themselves. So being over, overly sexual in their dance and then you get her, and you go talk to her and find out, you know, that she's a, a Christian girl from the Midwest who's uh, very prudish. That isn't necessarily surprising, um, since she wasn't really being herself on the dance floor. So, I mean, you see that all the time in Vegas. So, but um, but yeah, uh, it can be quick. So, so something to think about. Um, here's some things you can say in the club. You're cute. What's your name? You smell great. You win. That's something I usually say when girls walking by me. Whoa, 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 whoa come here. You smell great, you win. Number one, number one prize. Um, you guys look like you're in a band. You need a manager? No dancing allowed, except break dancing and Mulan. That one's a funny one, obviously, if you're, especially if you're on the dance floor. Um, so yeah, all these are just sort of like short, punchy, get their attention, uh, interesting kind of things to say. They'll either get a laugh, get a smile, or make them want to talk to you. Um, so, yeah, and the, I've used all these to, to great effect. So um, they're all great ones you can use while you're out. All right, let's talk about a restaurant. Um, you know, if you're an older guy, 
uh, or you you know like to eat out a lot, uh, this is something you've probably you know a situation you've been in where you've been at a restaurant, and you've seen a woman that's there with maybe with her friends, uh, and you thought, how the heck would I ever approach her or talk to her? Well, it could be done. So let's talk about it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to time your approach, and the way you time it is you look at what's going on. Did they just get their food? Did they do they not have their food yet? Did they have drinks? Are their plates empty? You want to time your approach because I guarantee you, if you hesitate and then it's like, oh, I'm gonna go do it. As soon as you get over there, within three seconds, the waiter's gonna come by and get their order, and you're gonna be left standing there awkwardly while the waiter gets their order. So the best thing you can do is just wait a few minutes. They're at a restaurant. You're not. They're not usually going anywhere unless it's the end of their meal. And if it is, you can tell because their plates will be empty. If their plates are empty, it's that's a good time. Um, or if a um, uh, if they let's say just got their drinks, that can be a good time. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise you might want to wait. You don't want to open them as soon as they get their food because they're going to be eating for the next little bit. If they're halfway done their meal, then that's that can be an okay time if they're kind of picking up their food. Um, but just yeah, time your approach. Just after the waiter visits them is usually a good idea too, because you know he's not probably he or she isn't coming back for like five minutes at least. Ask to join you for a drink at your table. Um, again, with in a restaurant, you don't want to sit and, and chat them up too long because they probably are there because they're with their friends or their family or they want to talk um, and you're interrupting that. So you want to go short and quick and then if they do want to keep talking to you, ask them to join you uh, for a drink at your table, usually after they're done their meal. Um, so I'll give you some examples of things you could say here in a sec, but uh, that's usually the way to go about it. Do not linger, like I just said. Um, it can what can initially be uh, wow what what a what an interesting uh, you know out of the ordinary approach is now the creepy guy hitting on us at the restaurant when we're just trying to have fun and talk to her you know talk to our friends so that can that can get weird real quick so don't don't linger um, invite them to an event that's happening later uh, again if you're let's say just there with one other friend or something and it's um, you know you guys have to go right after. You can invite them to the event that you guys are going to. That's an easy way. They may not come. It doesn't really matter. It's um, But if they do come, that's great because there's an assumed friendship if they do come. You'll find that if you invite them to something and they show up, it's almost like a secret friendship that you guys already have once you're there. And they may even be excited to see you, which seems weird if you've only talked to them for 30 seconds at the restaurant. But that's just the way it works. There's, a, um, there's like a built-up, assumed friendship there uh, once you see see someone in more than one location. So that can be very, uh, you know, that can help you quite a bit. If there was just maybe a spark of attraction when it happened, but then they go to that place and, you know, the girl's like, no, let's go meet them. They seem kind of interesting. And if, you know, whatever, if they're not, that place seems cool anyway. And they go there and now you're there and you're, you know, uh, you meet up with them. It's almost like there's, you know, there's a lot more there than just if you had met them at the place. So it can be, it can work out well. So here's an example of something you can say. Hey, sorry to interrupt you, uh, but I have to say, you guys are all incredibly beautiful. But there's something about your friend here I had to come and say hi. My name is Derek. What are you guys' names? Well, listen, um, I'm sitting over here with some friends. Why don't you guys all come join us for a drink when you're finished? Okay? So again, say you're sorry to interrupt, but I have to say, you guys are all incredibly beautiful. So you want to compliment all of them because you don't want to necessarily... Uh, you know, be like, hey, you're really cute because then it leaves the other ones out and they're going to not, you know, you want to pay them all a compliment. Um, but then you single the friend out and introduce yourself, get their names, and then just invite them over to have a drink with you. Now, if they start talking and they, like sometimes what will happen is they'll say stuff like, wow, that was really ballsy. You got a lot of confidence to come and they, you know, they want to talk to you a little bit more to see, get a better read of what kind of guy you are. Well, that's fine. Talk to them for another minute or so. Ask them how their meal was, how they know each other, if it's a special occasion, why they're out, things like that, where they're going later. And this is all good information to have anyway. Um, and, you know, it may be the girl that you say is, is, is something about her. She may be married, right? The other two aren't. So this is the time when you're going to get all that information, very important information. So, you know, if that is the case, um, you know, and they say, oh, my friend, our friend's married, um, but, uh, you know, we are going out tonight. And you're like, you know what? You guys are you guys are cool. Come have a drink anyway. Um, you know, uh, I'm not gonna, I won't put moves on you since you're married. But uh, but you guys should, you know, you guys seem fun. So come have a drink with us, and you know, maybe we can all go together to this place. And then you maybe, uh, uh, you know, you may 
maybe uh, start connecting with one of the other single friends, and that works out great. So there you go. All right, hired guns. So hired guns is basically you know bartenders, um, waitresses, uh, just the women that are working at the night uh, places you're going to. <coughs> so the first thing you want to do when you're, especially if they're bartenders. Uh, is you order and you get their name and remember it, remember her name. Uh, easy way to remember names is as soon as you get her name, think of either a friend or a celebrity that has the same name and then make a connection in your head between those two people. So it, sometimes it's like, oh, if her name is, uh, you know, uh, Julia, it's like, oh, it's like Julia Roberts uh, from like Pretty Woman. And then you just think of Pretty Woman in your head when you see her and that, you know, that's an easy thing to remember because there's a visual uh, there's a visual reference for it in your head and that makes it very easy to remember her name. Anyway, you can do that for everyone, not just women that are bartenders, but uh, it's an easy way to remember names. So remember it uh, because every time you talk to her, you want to use her real name. And the reason you do this is because, like I said earlier, these women have like a face they put on. It's like a mask when they're working. So when you say her name, it kind of puts her into the friendship mode and it makes her drop the act a little bit. Uh, you want to flirt in bursts and you want to be subtle about it. Uh, you can't flirt the same way with a bartender or a waitress as you can with a, a girl that you just meet because you can't really touch them too much. Um, I would just use like the, their lower arms because uh, that's the only part of their body you're normally going to have access to. You know what I mean? So uh, just like touching. Don't like, don't like grab or squeeze or anything like that, but just a light touch on her hand to emphasize points or uh, to laugh with her and stuff. Again, I'm going to teach attraction in a later lesson in terms of how exactly you want to flirt, but if you're someone that already knows how to flirt, um, that this is how you want to do it. Do it in bursts and you want to be subtle about it. Uh, don't be a customer. Get the real her. Um, so this, there's a number of ways you can do this. I mentioned earlier by repeating her name. Um, the other thing is don't asking things about her work. So don't ask her if the place gets busy or um, how long she's working or how long she's been there, stuff like that. Um, you know, I'll usually talk about things that, um, you know, sometimes it's things that are just happening around in the neighborhood. I you know, especially if it's places that I are in my neighborhood, uh, I'll just get her opinion on them. If, you know, she went to the, the parade or saw the thing that happened the other day, um, things like that. Um, that. That can be an easy way to get her out of her sort of bartender or hired gun uh, sort of thing. I'll also just say like random opinions I have about stuff, uh, not serious things, like not like politics or anything like that, but um, sometimes it's about people, like if guys order certain drinks, I'll usually say like, you know what, I find the guys that always order that trick are guys like this, and just maybe say that as a joke. And I, technically, I guess that's kind of about her job, but it's, it's funny enough and, and it's a conversation that she doesn't get enough that she's probably going to be, you know, it's kind of like you're giving her the inside scoop on stuff she probably already knows showing an awareness and a, uh, um, you know, an understanding of her world uh, that could be a way to get uh, some attraction going. And then uh, similar to what I said earlier with the barista, ask you to write her number on the receipt and then text her asking when she gets off. Um, you, know, you don't want to necessarily ask when she gets off at the bar because she would not want other customers to hear her giving you that information because you never know. She might have creepers that hang out there that are always trying to hit on her that she wouldn't want them to know that information uh, or even think that she actually would give that information to a guy. Um, but just ask her to write the number on, on the receipt. Uh, again, very ballsy move and works well. I've had that work so many times. I had a jar uh, at my house uh, with uh, bar receipts with numbers written on them from bartenders um, and it was pretty full. So it, I mean, I probably says more about how many bars I go to than how many times I've tried it, but, um, but yeah, uh, it's, it, it works really well. 